welcome to your season of hope. Praise the Lord and welcome back to Hope in this new year. I want to take this opportunity and, uh, and really, really greet you all from the bottom of my heart. A very happy new year. Friends, this year is going to be special. And I'm excited here at Hope where, 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 where I have a word for you. And before we get into all of that, I just want to say how much I appreciate you how much we, we, we value your feedback, your comments, and your word of encouragement. And many people have written and said that you're praying for us. Thank you. We need those prayers. And friends, today as we go in, this is a new year. I'm going to start with a word, and this word is from the Lord. I'm telling you, I'm telling you, get ready, get ready, get ready. Your life will never, ever be the same again when you hear this Word of God. Let's go into today's teaching. Welcome to your season of hope. Well, praise the Lord, we are in Luke chapter number 5, the Gospel of Luke chapter number 5. So it was, as the multitudes pressed about him to hear the word of God, that he stood by the lake of Gennesaret. This is Luke chapter 5, verse number 1. And in verse 2, the Bible says, And saw two boats standing by the lake, but the fishermen had gone from them and were washing their nets. Just, just, just put a marker in that verse. We're going to come back to that verse again. Verse number 3. Then he, meaning Jesus, got into one of the boats, which was Simon's, and asked him to put out a little from the land. And he sat down and taught the multitudes from the boat. When he had stopped speaking, he said to Simon, Launch out into the deep and let down your nets for a catch. But Simon answered and said to him, Master, we have toiled all night and caught nothing. Let's just put a marker there as well. We have toiled all night and we have caught nothing. We, we'll come back to it again in a, in a few short minutes here. Nevertheless, at your word, I will let down the net. And when they had done this, they caught a great number of fish and their net was breaking. So they signaled to their partners in the other boat to come and help them. And they came and filled both the boats so that they began to sink. When Peter saw it, he fell down at Jesus' knees saying, Depart from me, for I am a sinful man, O Lord. For he and all and all who were with him were astonished at the catch of the fish which they had taken. And so also were James and John, the sons of Zebedee, who were partners with Simon. And Jesus said to Simon, do not be afraid. From now on, you will catch men. So when they had brought their boats to land, they forsook all and followed him. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Thank you for the reading of the word, Lord God. Hallelujah. And today I'm going to speak to you on the title, Your Failure is not final. I said your failure is not final. Many times the world uh, uh, defines us by our failures. The, 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 the circumstances, the people around you, they define you by what you could not do, by what you did not do, by, by, by how short you fell or the things that you said you will accomplish but were unable to accomplish. You know, this is something which I've noticed not only, not only here where I am, but everywhere I go, I, I, I see how people put out a marker around your life by the things that you are unable to accomplish. But I came here today, dear friends, in this new year to tell you that your failure is not final. Hallelujah. Somebody say that with me. Failure is not 
final. Yes, your failure is not final. You might have gone through stuff in 2021. You might have gone through stuff in 2022. Hey, but you, you've made it to 2023 and you are a living testimony that your past failure cannot stop you from what God has for your life. Now let's get into our text here. In our text here, I told you to put a marker on verse number two. In verse number two, we see a picture painted to us. Jesus is coming down. Jesus is coming to town. Jesus is coming to town and a great, great multitude are following him. Let me say something there. Whenever Jesus comes to town, he's not looking for a chair or a boat or a bank or something. No, no, he is looking for you. He knows, Jesus knows what he's about to do. Hallelujah. Jesus knows way before Simon Peter met Jesus, Jesus already knew where where he was headed to. In other words, your problem might be so big for you or your failure might be so big in your mind that you are not able to see that Jesus is heading your way. Hallelujah. Jesus is heading your way. He is heading your way not just to not just to not just to make you feel good about the situation. No, no. He is heading your way to dissolve that mountain of a problem you may be facing today. I can to announce to you this more that today on this show and wherever you are watching me from all around the world I came to announce to you that there is hope for your life today there is a new beginning for your life today the past is past but your past failure cannot put, keep you down Jesus is coming by your way hallelujah praise the Lord oh, oh my 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 and and here is Peter here is Peter in, in verse 2, it says, Jesus saw the boats, but the fishermen had gone and were washing their nets. I would say that this paints a picture of <laughs> despair. The boats are left there. Fishermen gone somewhere else. They might have worked. They, 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 they were working all day, all night, as you will see later, and they caught nothing. They caught nothing nothing they toiled all night and caught nothing they toiled all night and caught nothing you may be there in your life and you are wondering what what does this year have to offer to me what does this year have to uh, offer to me that last year didn't offer or the year before didn't offer or the last decade didn't offer. Ladies and gentlemen, you might have been hit with so much of failure that you are unwilling to dream, that you're unwilling to even look for a solution. You, you've been waiting so long. You've been waiting so long for your miracle. You've been waiting so long for your breakthrough. You've been waiting so long for things to open. You've been waiting so long for the right door to open. You've been waiting so long for, the, for, 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 for things in your your ministry to take off but it's been so long now that the so long of wait has now become your identity you see yourself as failure you see yourself as yeah you know what I'm there's nothing that I do that ever prospers everything that I do it just fails I've done that I've tried that I've burnt my fingers I am not going to do this anymore he was in a state of despair there was Simon in a, in a state of despair and Jesus steps into his boat. Remember the title of my sermon today. Remember the title of my teaching today. Your failure is not final. Hallelujah. I said your failure is not final. Somebody say that again with me. My failure is not my final. Hallelujah. My failure is not my end. My failure is not the end of my story. My failure is not the end of my life life. My failure is not the end of my ministry. My failure is not the end of my marriage. My failure is not the end of my life. I came to say to you today with an emphasis and with an anointing that God has placed in my life that your life shall never ever be the same again because God is getting ready to do something in your life that is going to astonish the whole wide world around you. Somebody shout yeah! Hallelujah. 
I said your failure is not final, my friend. You might have toiled all through the decade. You might have toiled with the enemy. You might have toiled with the bankers. You might have toiled with in-laws. You might have toiled with family. You might have toiled as a pastor trying to do all things and nothing is happening. The more you try, the more people leave your church. The more you try, the more, you know, the offerings go down. Oh, but I came today to tell you, I don't know whom I'm preaching to this year. I said, this year your life will never be the same again this year as Jesus is coming down the lake of Gennesaret he is not there might be loads of people around him but Jesus knows what he's going to do he knows what he's got on his mind he knows that he's coming out there to you hallelujah 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 and there he steps into the boat And he allows Peter to push him a little bit. And after he's done teaching to the crowds, he turns to Simon, his original assignment. And he tells Simon, I know, listen, 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 listen. Don't shut me out now. I know that you've read this again and again many times, but don't shut me out now. Here is something that's going to shock you. Here is something that's going to catapult you here is something they're gonna shake you out of your present situation and 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 you know and tell you your life is going to change my friend and Jesus tells him in verse number four he says Simon launch into the deep he says Simon launch into the deep he says Simon <laughs> now Don't just do what you did, go a bit further. Here's the instruction from the Lord. Don't just do what you did all night, but go a bit further. In other words, Jesus is telling Simon, Simon, what you did was good, but I got something better for you. What you did all night was good, but I got something better for you. What was that better? He says, go further. Go further. It might sound strange. It might sound, it might sound, I mean, why would he do what he's going to do and do it even more and go further? Isn't that the height of foolishness? To do the same thing and expect another and and expect different results all the time. It might sound like that to the world. People might be looking from the outside and telling you, why are you continuing to do the same thing? Why are you still going to that church? Why are you still seeking God? Why are you still, you know, meditating on His promises? Yes, that is because the promises of God are yes and amen in Christ Jesus. Hallelujah. I said, the promises of God are yes and amen in Christ Jesus. Listen. Listen, I mean, God told me, uh, the Holy Spirit impressed upon me once and said, Paul, you, didn't, you did not force the Lord to write his promises in his word. I didn't force it. So I cannot just make things up just to soothe myself. No, whether you claim them or not, whether you appropriate them or not, whether you believe them or not, the promises of God are still yes and amen. Hello? In other words, God has already promised what he will do. Let me rephrase that. God has already promised that what he has done will be yours. Let me say that another way. God has already put in writing that everything that he has done, it is yours. Now it is up to you to claim it. Hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. Hallelujah. I, you know, a few years ago, a few years ago, a few years ago, uh, the Holy Spirit impressed upon me and said, he said, Paul, the only thing that pleasures God is to be believed. The only thing that brings pleasure to God is for you and I to believe him. It's for you and I to just take him at his word. Why? Go with me to Numbers. Put your hand there and go with me to Numbers chapter number 23. Numbers chapter number 23. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. My, I'm so fired up for today. Glory be to God. Somebody's getting their miracle today. Somebody, somebody, somebody. Yo, you need to hear this word. Your failure is not final, my friend. Hallelujah. 
And, and the Bible says in Numbers chapter number 23 and verse number 19, this is my all-time favorite in the scripture. It says, God is not a man that he should lie, nor a son of man that he should repent. In other words, change his mind. Has he said and will he not do it? Or has he spoken and will he not make it good? Has he said and will he not do it? Has he spoken and will he not make it good? For God is not a man that he should lie. Now the son of man to change his mind. When God promises you something, my friend, he will bring it to pass. When God has put his promise in his word and he says, all of my promises are yes and amen. Hallelujah. Are yes and amen in Christ Jesus. It should guarantee you that God will never fail you. Just, just keep your finger there and go with me to another verse of scripture. A verse of scripture I just love. This was the verse of scripture the Lord gave me 15 years ago. Sorry, 16 years ago on the 30th of March 2006 at 3.33 p.m. As I was driving from one city into my home city, I was driving under a viaduct, under a bridge. And these were the words that God gave me. I will never forget it for the rest of my life. On the 20th. On the, on the 30th of March, 2006, God dropped this in my spirit. And, and, and it's found in Psalms 89. Psalms 89. The Bible says in Psalms 89, verse number 34. Psalms 89, verse number 34. The Bible says in Psalms 89, at verse number 34, my covenant... I will not break. Hallelujah. My covenant I will not break. Hallelujah. Somebody just raise your hands and say, thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Somebody just, 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 oh, let's just take a moment and thank him because he is a covenant keeping God. He is a covenant keeping God. Hallelujah. He says, my covenant I will not break. God will not break the covenant that he's done with, with you through Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. It is not based on your merits. It is not based on your goodness. It is not even based on your holiness and, and your piety and your good deeds. No, God made a covenant with himself in Christ Jesus. Hallelujah. He said, he said, I know all men cannot, cannot equal me. I cannot make a covenant with somebody, somebody that is lower than me. So I will make a covenant with myself. I will make a covenant with my son. And I will include all of mankind in that covenant. And he says that that covenant I will not break. Hallelujah. My God. You, God is a covenant keeping God. Somebody cheer up today. Somebody say, my days of doom and despair are over. My days of doom and despair are over. They are behind me. And that which is ahead of me is days of glory. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Gee, God says, my covenant I will not break. And then he goes on to say, nor alter. Hallelujah. See that? Nor alter the word that has gone out of my lips. Nor alter the word that has gone out of my lips. In other words, God will not change his promises. Hallelujah. God will not change his promises wherever you are. No matter how, 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 what, what, what depravity you might find yourself in. God says, I will keep my covenant. I am not a man that I should lie. Nor am I a son of man that I should change my mind. If I have spoken it, I will do it. Hallelujah. And I will make it good. My dear friend, my dear friend, my dear friend, today is your day. Wherever you are, all these years that failure has tried to put you and say you're a failure, you're a this and that. No, 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 no. Failure is never final. Hallelujah. In fact, to the equation of success, failure is a necessary component. Woohoo! <laughs> I said failure is a necessary ingredient. There is nobody that has succeeded greatly that has not failed greatly. Hallelujah. Failure. Don't you worry. You know, I've, I've, uh, I've had a fair portion of my failure. Oh, yes, yes. I've failed. I've failed in more ways than one. Tell, let me tell you. I've failed in more ways than one. Uh, I was speaking somewhere and... Uh, 
I was speaking in another country and somebody came and asked me, oh, pastor, can you just pray that I'll get your anointing? And you know, this thing about playing, anointing is something that's given by God. It is not yours in the first place. It's not yours in the first place. Let me tell you, it's not your anointing. It's God's anointing. God anoints whom he wills. Yeah. God anoints whom he wills. God anoints whom he wills. It is not your anointing. It's God's anointing. But at that time, I was younger and, you know, so I laid my hands on this gentleman. I said, Lord. <laughs> I said, Lord. I pray, Lord, that he doesn't get his salary on time. I mean, people got shocked when I prayed that. And I laid my hands on him. I pray, I pray Lord, that every week people will leave their church. Now, this was many years ago. And he said, no, 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 pastor, I want you to pray for your anointing. I said, that's how I got my anointing. Hello? Let me say that. Yeah. There is, there is no great anointing that has no great pain behind it. There's a lots of failures. Friends, failure is a necessary ingredient in the equation of success. Everybody failed. Oh, yeah, Abraham failed, David failed. Everybody that you read in Scripture, they fail. But failure is not final. That's the point. Failure is not final. Failure is never final. I, 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 I want you to see that. I want you to see that your past failure, even your present failure, is not the full stop of your life. Wherever circumstances has, put a, has, has, has punched a full stop, God, in His grace, is going to turn it into a comma and says, your life will never be the same again. Your latter years shall be greater than your former years. Hallelujah. You shall go above and not beneath. You shall be the head and not the tail. No weapon formed against you shall be able to prosper because I keep my covenant. Hallelujah. I keep my covenant. And today, the entrance of his word is going to bring life to you. I don't know who I'm preaching to. I'm not preaching to the multitudes today. I'm preaching to you right where you are, in your sofa, in your bedroom, on in your car, watching this somewhere, hearing this in your, in your ears. I'm speaking to you. God is speaking to you through my voice. And he says, your failure is never final. Get ready, get ready, get ready. Your glory days are coming. Hallelujah. Your, your days of despair are over. Your days of depravity are over. Your days of failure are over. I am bringing you out of where you thought you will never come out from because I'm well able to do exceedingly, abundantly, above all you can ask or desire. Remember, my friend, failure is never final. God bless you. Oh, hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. My, 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 I was so excited. And I, I hope that you receive that word the same way, with the same intensity, with the same zeal, and with the same passion that the Lord allowed me to preach it to you and for you and with you. Because friends, yes, your failure is not final. Come on, say that with me. My failure is not final final. Hallelujah. You better get, just write it on every doorpost in your house. Put it on your telephone. Feed it on your Instagram. Feed it on your Twitter. Wherever. Just say it boldly. 2023. My failure is never, is not final. Amen. Hallelujah. Because God can bring you out. And when God steps in, he's a covenant keeping God. So I, I hope and I pray that this word will not only bring hope into your life, but it'll just rejuvenate your whole system and get you kicked up, get you, get you going so that you can approach this year knowing that God has great things for your lives. Friends, you know that I never close a broadcast without asking you and giving you an opportunity to receive the Lord Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. Would you pray with me, please? Father, yes, repeat after me. Father, I thank you. I come to you 
in Jesus' name. Wash me of my sin. Cleanse me. Make me whole again. Forgive me. Receive me into your family. I boldly confess that Jesus is Lord and Savior of my life. Amen. If you prayed that prayer, I want to welcome you into the family of God. You are an heir and a joint heir with Christ Jesus. God bless you and I'll see you again next week.